All right, a good Sunday to you. Thanks for logging on and finding us here. I'm meteorologist John Dawson. This is the Fox 26 tropical update. We always have time to dive into things and really discuss what's happening in the tropics. I know that we've got a lot of viewers out there who are obviously in the Houston area, but we always get a good information and we hear from folks in the Caribbean. We hear from folks in Louisiana, and so this is an international type broadcast. I don't know how many folks that we have that regularly check in with us on the East Coast, but hopefully there'll be a few new folks listening because we do have some activity to talk about that definitely concerns the East Coast. The National Hurricane Center at 4 p.m. on Sunday, beginning to issue advisories for potential tropical cyclone eight. That's this mess that's been sitting off of the coast of the Carolinas for several days now. Got a stationary boundary in there. You got a low pressure system that's fairly broad and kind of helping kind of churn together and form some energy. That front is beginning to completely fall away now and sort of dissolve. And what we're going to be left with is some kind of a system, whether it's technically a tropical or a subtropical or non tropical or just a rainmaker in general. The National Hurricane Center being a bit proactive here. I um, support this. I think they're doing a wise move by using their potential tropical cyclone abilities to issue some advisories on this because this is going to be a rainmaker for the East Coast, specifically uh, looking into the Carolinas as we're looking at some rainfall that's going to begin to add up and to cause some flash flooding issues. Also, we're definitely going to be thinking it could become a tropical system and named although it doesn't have a whole lot of time for that to happen. Again, this is the 4 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. They had aircraft, the National the Hurricane Hunters flying in it during the day on Sunday, and this is what they've come up with on the 4 p.m. update. Maximum sustained winds at 45 miles an hour. Not quite uh, enough of a closed circulation at the surface to really classify it as a tropical system but very, very close to becoming that. Uh, also that interaction with that boundary, that front that was still there, also kind of keeping it from a little more questionable in its, uh, its the definition or what it actually is. But perhaps by Monday afternoon, noon, tomorrow afternoon, we could see enough organization that it becomes a tropical storm right before landfall there on the coast of South Carolina. So we'll have to see how that kind of all pans out and then possibly a depression or a subtropical system as it moves through uh, the sort of again the East Coast area bringing quite a bit of rainfall. So a lot to talk about here with eight, but here's what the main concern is going to be that rainfall. That's really going to start to add up as we go through the next four to five days. You'll notice even over into our nation's capital there a little later in the week, more in that Wednesday night, Thursday time frame, also adding up quite a bit of rainfall. But Riley, uh, in North Carolina, that's where we're going to see the heaviest of the rainfall, where we're up over five inches, maybe even as much as eight. That's going to be collecting and causing some problems with flooding. So no matter what this system ends up being, whether it just stays potential potential tropical cyclone eight or whether it becomes an actual depression or a named storm, this is going to be happening with all of this rainfall. A little bit more organization could even bring more winds that could be a threat, but this is really going to be something that's watched for the rain threat that it's going to continue to bring. So still looking a little not so organized overall as far as this tropical mess that's sitting off of the coast. But I do want to point out that other agencies besides the National Hurricane Center paying some close attention here from the Weather Prediction Center who issues the excessive rainfall outlook or that potential for flash flood They've definitely focused a little bit closer into Mississippi and Alabama uh, for now, but because of this system, they've already got a little bit of coastline lit up there for Sunday. But when we get into Monday, look how this really spreads out for the potential of some flash flooding on Monday. This is directly related to potential tropical cyclone eight, and then that threat continues to bring in moisture, bring in heavy rain, maybe not as promising of a flooding event, but certainly some possibilities and some chances that that continues a little bit further up that east coast to the north. So here's kind of what we've been looking at. This system 
very ill defined, so it's hard to say that this is a very well uh, laid out track that it's been following. But again, it's been sort of riding along that boundary that's been out there. Our computer miles have been churning on it for a couple of days. You can see for the most part, they're taking it into uh, South Carolina or North Carolina's coastline, uh, probably just a little bit north of Charleston is sort of what the indications are at this point in time. I do want to zip on out here to the Atlantic for a moment. Talk about Gordon. Gordon is still out there. If you'll remember when we have a name storm, once it became named, it keeps that name, even if it were to be downgraded to a depression. And that's what we find ourselves with right now. Tropical depression, Gordon. And this is a system that's going to slow way down and it's going to struggle to really stay a tropical system. If it can stay a tropical system, it might have an opportunity to gather a little bit more uh, northerly direction, and that would actually be slightly more favorable conditions to stay a tropical system. But there's certainly some question marks out there. But no matter what, the good news here is that Gordon is expected to stay out in the Atlantic Ocean and not interfere with land, not expected to make a landfall. So we'll be talking about Gordon for a while, but we're not as concerned about Gordon unless you happen to be on a, a, a ship and you're headed out to the middle of the Atlantic. Otherwise, watch how this thing just slowly crawls along. By the end of the week on Friday, it hasn't really moved all that far, but perhaps it's gained a little bit more intensity on the winds and organized just a little bit more. So we talked about potential tropical cyclone eight if it were to become a tropical storm and that's no certainty that that's going to happen. It could just sort of stay this non tropical mess as it brings all of its rainfall to the Carolinas. But if it were Helene is the next name on the list that we will be using. So we'll be just kind of watching for that, particularly tomorrow. That window of opportunity, though, because it's so close to becoming centered over land is not very uh, wide. It's not going to be a lot of time for that potential to be happening. So we'll see how it all unfolds. We're here every day of hurricane season, bringing you the latest on the tropics. We hope you have a chance to check in with us again. This is the Sunday afternoon update. We'll be back again Monday afternoon with the latest on Gordon and whatever is happening off the coast of the Carolinas.